Welcome to the Screen Connect demonstration for how to extend the host client with a plugin. As you'll see here, we have a fairly standard Screen Connect installation. I've created a session uh, and the guest is connected. So here we'll uh, do some customizations to the host and show you how that works. So um, this will happen through code. Um, I'm going to pull Visual Studio over here and pull up a project I already created. Uh, there's a couple little uh, things that you have to do to get everything working correctly, and I'll try to point those out. Uh, first of all, we just created a new project, uh, a C Sharp class library. Uh, we took we have a single class in here um, that called the main form initializer. Um, one thing that we had to do was if you go into the assembly info file, the first thing you have to do is you have to mark um, this assembly as a plugin for Screen Connect. Um, this is an attribute that's applied at the assembly level, so Screen Connect knows that it's a plugin. Um, we have already referenced the Screen Connect assemblies you'll see here, and I've referenced uh, system.windows.forms and system.drawing. Um, these assemblies are just references to .client, .core, and .host client. Those are um, those are in your Screen Connect bin directory. So once those references are created, we can uh, we can get to work. Um, the way this is done is uh, Screen Connect. Once this is marked as a plugin, Screen Connect will look in the plugin to do things. Um, this what we're doing here is it's looking at the plugin to initialize an item, which is a host client main form. This is the host client and the main form. This part of it. Oops. So uh, I just called it the main form initializer. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you call the class, but what's important is that when you, uh, the implementation of I initialize item, if we can navigate to it, um, is just a single method called initialize item. And I have that method uh, implemented here. And what I did was a couple things that, um, that were mentioned to us at one point. Um, one thing is to add a menu item, and one thing was to change the background color. Um, you'll see to add a menu item, um, the host client, which is item, the main menu strip of the host client uh, will get the what's the third menu item off of that, which happens to be the tools item. Um, from the tools item, we will add a test item. And when the test item is clicked, we'll show a message box that says test. Um, also, the item, which is the main form, will set the fill to a solid color of purple. So uh, when I go into this uh, project here, um, it's got a build to target uh, .NET Framework 3.5 or 2.0. Um, probably 2.0 would be even better, uh, but I do know this works here. Um, when you're building it, um, this is actually the location of my Screen Connect directory, but you'll need to build to go to your Screen Connect bin directory. And um, it can be called anything, and most of, most of this information is fairly uh, straightforward. It will have to be signed with a strong name key file. Uh, we have our own, and you can generate your own as a company. But it, it does need to be strongly named. But uh, that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. Uh, it took me a couple of uh, minutes fiddling around, but once I did it, uh, this little bit of code did what we wanted to. So we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll build this and it says unable to copy because mine is already running. So let me close that and let me try to build again. And now that uh, it built again, everything should be all right. So it built, it went to my Screen Connect bin directory, which, um, which I can pull you up right here and show you. Um, this is pretty much the standard contents of a bin directory, but you'll see here we have Screen Connect host client plugin and a PDB file, which is a debug file and that matches our project name up here. So we know we, uh, that went to that directory. Now, um, what we use is a product called Click Once for Deployment, and I will go ahead and kind of show you what we need to do. Um, the host client here um, has a manifest and an application, which is a, um, I think it's an application manifest and a deployment manifest is what Click Once calls them. Um, you'll see that the the application manifest, which I believe this is called, specifies a few files. We have client.dll, um, we have core.dll, and we have hostclient.dll. Um, we also have a few PDB files here, um, but we, we don't have um, any reference to our plugin in this file. 
So what we'll have to do is we'll have to uh, open Microsoft's utility. It's called MageUI.exe. Um, you'll it comes with the Windows SDK, and you'll have to open this utility. And with this utility, you can um, drop this file in and start editing the file. This uh, really breaks apart a lot of what we had seen in that file. Um, where we really need to start changing things is in this. This this is the files that are included and this, this might look familiar from what I was just browsing. But uh, rather than including these files, we need to add ours, and I haven't really found a way to add other than to click this populate button. Now the populate button happened to go through and, and chose some things we don't want, so I'm gonna, sit, I'm gonna hit the delete key for all these various things that we don't want. I don't even need the PDBs for now. I know I need hostclient.exe, which is coming down here. And then I can keep deleting stuff till we get down to our plugin. So now um, these were the three files that were originally there, and I'm adding our plugin. At this point, I can hit save, which is going to resave the file. Now the real critical point of why uh, why this needs to be um, done by you in this way is that you have to use your own code signing certificate to sign this. Um, we can't really be uh, responsible for the type of code you have put in here, so um, we can't allow our certificate to be reused. Um, but you can generate a certificate from any of the ma main standard uh, certificate authorities for your, you to sign this yourself. So here I'm just going to browse ours, um, but I can, I can browse ours and hit OK. Um, now you'll see here that uh, this file changed, um, the date changed, so it did get saved. Um, so the exe.manifest needs to be saved first, and then the application, um, the exe.manifest is called the application manifest, I believe, and the, applic the application file is called the deployment manifest. The deployment manifest references the application manifest. Um, you'll see here this references this other file. Um, what I found is that you have to go here, you have to reselect the same file that you had selected before for it to really acknowledge that it's a new version of that file and then you just do the same thing to save we click our certificate and hit save and you'll see this gets updated with the new date also so we have our two files um, our two manifests that got updated to uh, to, to say that um, we, we have our plugin included with this so now if all goes well I can hit join here and let me bring everything onto this monitor. It gives me the standard click once prompt. Um, this will uh, change to your own publisher um, at this point because, um, because you've signed it with your certificate. But once I click run, it runs and you'll see um, I have my background brush uh, specified to be purple. And in the tools menu, I have a new test item down here and I can click that and hit test. Um, just to verify that um, everything is working correctly. I was going to say that we could attach a debugger, but uh, never mind. Uh, this, this code only runs r right at startup, as it's, as it's called initialize. It'll only run right at startup. But um, it does show you that we, we have uh, customized this fairly quickly and instantly. You can add any menu items here. At this point, we could also possibly remove menu items that were already there. We can. Um, we can, for example, check d the disabled control menu item uh, in order to, to disable the control from the host by default. Uh, there's just a lot of little things that we can do um, to, to kind of change the experience of the host and guest clients. So um, that's about it. Um, this, uh, we have kind of some limited uh, ways to initialize the, these forms. Um, there's a few other things you can do in a plugin. Um, you can for example, create a different launcher to launch a different client that's been created. Um, you can uh, customize special messages to be sent across the wire um, and a couple things like that. But at this point, it's pretty limited. But um, anyway, uh, that's, that's the demo. I uh, hope it's uh, answered some questions. Thank you.